morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. Well, by now, a lot of ranch horses are seasoned and solid and really legged up from a summer of good hard work, and cowboys are looking forward to the fall gather, and as always, the beady-eyed bard from Benson, Baxter Black, has a great offering today. It was like trying to rope an emu with antlers. On the Rangeland News, we'll get into a subject that we don't talk about much around here. Maybe not even in the kitchen. And there's a moving piece of cowboy poetry about a pretty special horse. The man hummed his tunes to the hooves kicking dust. That horse was his friend. He allowed him his trust. On the Urban Saddles and Western Wear horse training file, a guy says he has a horse that has a sweet disposition and is really, is really bonded to him. But when he tries to ride him away from the barn, the horse throws a bucking frenzy. Hmm, might be something wrong with this picture. And a couple of great Westerners join the conversation today, Bob Wagner and Rusty Richards. And one of the things we'll cover is a lot of history about one of the most popular and recorded Western songs of all time. Stan wrote it for the Sons of the Pioneers, and they rejected it because I think it was Bob that felt like the melody was a steal from another song. Now, Bob Wagner had a horse something like the one in our opening song, and uh, you'll hear about it after Bobby Wayne's tribute to a special breed. Back in history's pages, there's a story we all know. How the white man fought the Indian, so the story goes. Have you heard about the horse the Indians say sweat blood? War horse of the Nez Perce, the Appaloosa stud. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, with your head held high. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, the proudest horse a man could ever ride. He could outrun any other horse in pistons or in speed. When the chase began, the Appaloosa always took the lead. The cavalry could never catch Chief Joseph and his band. The Nez Perce had the fastest, toughest horses in the land. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, with your head held high. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, the proudest horse a man could ever ride. They came from Spain to Mexico in the year of 92. From Mexico to the western states, the Appaloosa grew. The Indians said they liked his looks, his color, fire, and speed. The war horse of the Nez Perce, proudest of the western breed. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, with your head held high. Appaloosa. Appaloosa, the proudest horse a man could ever ride. General Howard gave the order when the war was done to kill the spotted horses, each and every one. Joseph's brother led 6,000 to the riverbed. Across the raging river, 3,000 there were dead. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, with your head held high. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, the proudest horse a man could ever ride. Appaloosa, Appaloosa, with your head held high. Appaloosa, Appaloosa. Well, Rusty Richards and I were sitting in a hotel room in Tucson, Arizona, quite a while ago, swapping stories and talking about horses and music when there was a knock at the door, 
and it was Billy with Bob Wagner. And she'd found him in the lobby and said, you better get up there. Rusty and you were doing an interview and they're talking about you. <laughs> so the conversation went from uh, one of Rusty's signature songs to an Appaloosa horse of Bob's. Well, again, it's it's the kind of thing that, uh, like I was just telling Rusty about his uh, the Fence Rider song. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. When we're out there uh, checking fences, moving mm-hmm. cows, we don't treat anaplas as much anymore, but we treat a lot of pink eye and a lot of foot rot and everything. Well, you're just living in this kind of atmosphere, in this kind of world, and just like there's an open range ahead, uh, or cowboy country, yeah. it kind of does. I mean, there's somehow, somebody has got to have lived that to be able to put Absolutely. that down that way. That's uh, one thing Rusty does so well, is he does everything well, but this, his songwriting, uh, you know, it's from the heart and it's from knowledge. This guy knows his horses, and as you do, and uh, he knows the, the ranch and country and what a guy has to do out there, and boy, that song really tells you that he knows it. Mm. Yeah, it really does. But, uh, you're just telling me about uh, digressing just a little bit from music to horses here. Yeah. But on Appaloosa, you had a few years ago, and when you're moving cows, he worked like he was part cow dog or oh, something. Oh, he sure did. And he was an ugly old brute, you know, big head. <laughs> <laughs> he really wasn't. A, he had a nice blanket, and that was about it. But uh, I, you know, I just. Uh, move cattle with the Tatum Ranch up there in Bishop occasionally and uh, at that time I had this old horse and uh, we'd get to chasing these cows moving them down through a fence and boy he'd just move in on them and grab that hide and snap it it was <laughs> great yeah yeah I, I, I've been trying to get my dogs to do that for a long time I got one horse that'll do that but my dogs are real good at healing the horses mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have this uh, blue healer female. She's more of a pet than anything else. She's a Queensland blue healer. And I was on a about a four-year-old filly I was riding for some friends of ours. And this filly was well enough along. I thought, I can go out and uh, ride the spring range fences on her, and I'll take this pup along. This pup was about a year old. And it went pretty good for the first half hour. And I was going through a slipwire gate. And I got off and swung the gate open. And I had just finished closing the gate, and I was going to step on this filly. And usually she'd stand nice and still. When I got on, that's one thing I kind of insist on, is I don't want that horse moving off until I say it's time to go. But I get one foot in the stirrup, and around and around she'd go, just turning right into me. And I'd I'd try and stop her and get her set and go to step on. And as soon as I'd go to step on, away she'd go. And I didn't teach her to do that. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Finally, I grabbed the bridle and cheeked her around and swung on and looked back. And here's my blue healer pup, halfway up her tail, clamped on, just swinging in the breeze here, you know, so... And we'll have more from these two legends of the West when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Well, a couple of extremely talented Western gentlemen are in that hotel room in Tucson a few years back. Bob Wagner, a wonderful musician, plays any instrument, and also a terrific Western artist. His paintings can be seen on a lot of those beautiful Leaning Tree Christmas cards and greeting cards. And Rusty Richards, for over 20 years, the clear high tenor voice of the Sons of the Pioneers, and a great horseman, horse trainer, and former Hollywood stuntman. Some of uh, Rusty's great songs, you know, uh, his uh, rodeo stuff that he's written and so on, that uh, says again how much this guy knows about what he's talking about. He's been, he's been through the wars there, and he's got a picture on one of his, what is that on your album, Rusty, you riding that old bull? What was that bull's name? Oh, it was Bluebell. Bluebell. Yeah, yeah. he was... Uh, uh, Andy's uh, Bluebell, and yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I treasure that picture because I'm out in Benelli Stadium on him, yep. and uh, he was uh, like a featured bull even at the national finals. You know, they would uh, feature him because he jumps a high. You know, he's yeah. a really spectacular you were bull. Really high that <laughs> Somebody snapped that picture. I can remember it from the album cover, and uh, you're up on your bull rope, and uh, you're not touching him with your free hand. You're right there, but that bull looks like he's just launching into one of those big high jumps. If you look at that picture pretty close, you'll see I'm looking through my fingers at the back of his head because he'd knock your teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> man, man. And uh, I'm. You know, look, he he did. He had, uh, I think, 17 sets of front teeth. But by the time I got on him, he'd, that's how many guys he'd hit in the face, you know. And they eventually they took to riding him with a football helmet because he, when he would make that high jump, and you had to get over him to ride him, then he'd throw his head back, and when you were about over him, he'd hit you in the face, you know. Man, oh man. But he was quite a bull, and Andy loved him, and 
I remember uh, Casey Tibbs and C.T. Jones and a fellow named Joe Edwards, an old-time cowboy out there, uh, and I went by to see Andy in his last, uh, this year he died, you know. And he, Andy had kind of withdrawn into himself. That thing. He'd been very, very ill. But we got talking about those bulls, and he brightened up. He looked like he was 20 years old. He just loved it. And we talked about old Squarehead and and some of his old great bulls that he'd had, Gentleman Jim. And, and uh, yeah, he had a, boy, everybody knew his Andy's bulls on the circuit. Yeah, he, had, he was a... He was a cowboy's uh, stock contractor. They all loved him, you know. He'd, he'd stake them once in a while, and and uh, he's, he loved the cowboys, and they loved him. Well, both Rusty and Bob were close friends of Bob Nolan, founding member of the Sons of the Pioneers, writer of more beautiful songs of the West than any other individual. And Bob Wagner has a story about Bob Nolan and one of Bob Wagner's horses after something that sure fits with this uh, coming fall. This is Ben Crane. Gold aspen leaves are slapping. The fallen ones are scratching along the ground. My wild rag sets to snapping. And I wish it me and Spook was homeward bound. The sky is turning yellow. The boss cow starts to beller Soon the herd will head for cover in the trees It started just this morning The weather seemed to promise hot and dry But it came here without warning The cold front pushing flurries on a slide Soon the ground will harden And then we'll have to pardon The intrusion of another winter's freeze Oh, the blue Alberta sky Oh, you're blue And so am I Somehow I'm never ready But it comes on just as steady and it leaves me longing for the warm embrace of the blue Alberta sky. We've brought the herd down lower. They're scattered all content like in my view Life has gotten slower Now that feeding is the only job to do In wanderings my mind goes back To our little one room square log shack where you wait for me to come home once again Oh, the blue Alberta sky That same blue is in your eyes well, You accept the lonely Knowing that it's only Until we can finally claim our little Well, cool, clear water and, of course, tumbling tumbleweeds are two Bob Nolan compositions that most folks are familiar with, but he wrote literally thousands more. 
But uh, maybe it was cool, clear water that had something to do with this story from Bob Wagner. You told me a story. Uh, in fact, I've heard, I've got a, a little piece of tape you sent me with Deacon actually doing a solo on tape that Bob Nolan oh, wound up with yeah. one time. Do you want to go over that story again, Bob? Sure. Yeah, well, Bob Nolan was visiting uh, me at the house there in Bishop, and uh, actually the Rainsmen were there at the same time, and uh, Bob had, you know, sat in there and told stories and got himself a little bit tired, so he went outside, and uh, so we just continued on with what we were doing, and we got to wondering where in the heck he was, and uh, went out there and looked, and here he was, I've got a stream that runs right now behind my studio, and he was out there with his tape recorder, uh, taping that sound of that stream, so we just left him alone. But pretty soon he came back in, and uh, he had left his tape recorder sitting right under my fence, where the stream runs, it, ra it ran through the corral, so my horse would have water all the time, and uh, he just left that thing where he couldn't get to it, but he came back in the studio and, oh golly, the tape ran out out there, of course, but he took it home. I asked him, I said, what are you going to do with this, Bob? And he says, well, I put it under my pillow at night and, and uh, listen to the water. And I thought, wow, that's heavy. Isn't that what they say today? That's <laughs> heavy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I got a call from, I got, no, I, I got a letter from him, that's what it was, and uh, he said that he was listening to that tape and he heard this a little bit of a kind of a snorty sound, then something else, and then you know how they do, they just keep getting a little louder as they get braver. And he, my horse, old Deacon, had his nose under that fence, and he was checking that tape recorder out, and finally he got a full blown blow on that thing, you know, and <laughs> Bob couldn't figure out what that was. So the next time I saw him, he asked me, well, What was that? And I informed him that that was old Deacon talking to him, you know. <laughs> so Bob here sent me a copy of that tape so I could listen to the, the stream and about two-thirds of the way into the tape I could actually hear this sound. But it's a 45-minute tape and I listened to 45 minutes of this creek running. And I wrote back to Bob and I said, I didn't know there's that much water in the state of California. <laughs> well, Bob and Rusty have some surprising insight into one of the most recorded Western songs of all time and why Bob Nolan did not want the Sons of the Pioneers to record it. And Baxter Black is standing by, then it's the Rangeland News, when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Howdy, friends, this is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan, and I'll be right back after this. With a little peek at Mule Days. Your land is a legacy, a challenge from those who tended it before you to build on their foundations. At Corteva Agriscience, we understand what it means to be the stewards of a legacy. We embrace the challenge of building on the foundation of Dow AgroSciences to maintain your trust, to bring new solutions, to help you care for your land. See how we can help build your legacy at rangeandpasture.com. And for our Canadian listeners, just check Corteva.ca, the Canadian website. There's something about mule people. Deborah was a recovering horse person married to a deep south good old boy named Lamar. She was also a closet mule person. A local trader was trolling for buyers. He had a paint gelding, a couple of sturdy saddle horses, and an eight-month-old Jericho Jack, all displayed in his pasture between the house and the road. Debbie drove by, looked at the paint, glanced at the saddle horses, and braked hard for the little burro. Thank goodness she had the trailer hooked on and her strapping son handy. The burrito charmed her. The trader held her up, and they loaded him with the warning that he'd never been touched by human hands. Lamar didn't greet their arrival with unbridled enthusiasm. No way, no time, no how, not on your life, never. She had immediately unloaded Burrito in the round corral, knowing he would escape from anything less and had been feeding him there since. It took a full week to persuade Lamar to try and help her halter the beast, now, Lamar was pretty cowboy and could rope. He got burrito circling like a man with one oar. It was like trying to rope an emu with antlers. His first loop cleared the ears, the front feet, and came tight around the flank. Lamar was off balance when the rope jerked. It peeled two square inches of hide off each palm and pulled him over on his nose. Go get my other wope, he suggested through his split lip. 
Well, Debbie came back with his other good rope. Lamar managed to pantyhose the burrow a second time and lose that lasso as well. They'd recently seen the film The Horse Whisper. It was fresh on her mind as she watched the Don Quito gallop around the round corral, the two ropes trailing in his wake like crepe paper flying from Ben-Hur's chariot. Lamar was crumpled to his knees. Deborah spoke. Reminds me of Robert Redford starring in that great movie The Alabama Ass Whisper, she said with a straight face. Funny, he replied. Very funny. Mule humor. Elusive. Unexpected. Dry as an asbestos candy bar. I was in Bishop, California at a grand celebration of mule people on Memorial Day. They called it Mule Days. I can recommend it. It's kind of like a cowboy poetry gathering, except more intellectual. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Brought to you by Corteva AgroScience. Just ahead of the Rangeland News, here's Ed Wall, always a favorite at the Kamloops Cowboy Festival, doing his best to keep the West alive. More than a hundred years too late, I've often heard that phrase. Cowboy from the space age, out of step with modern ways. Still pulling calves in the springtime, trying to save them all. Making hay in the summer heat, round up in the fall. Now at times you may get bothered by all the modern strife. Politicians, bankers, and bureaucrats that plague a rancher's life. There's a natural rhythm to a rancher's work, checking cows and fixing fence. Doing things that must be done, it all makes perfect sense. Oh, the work is hard and endless. It's the kind that fits a man For honest toil helps feed the world In tune with nature's plan Now at times you may get bothered By all the modern strife Politicians, bankers, and bureaucrats That plague a rancher's life Charlie Russell, John Chisholm, and good night. But if all of us had lived back then, we'd be here to keep up the fight. Oh, I miss those days of the open range and those longhorn cattle drives. But someone has to pick up the range to keep the West alive. Now at times you may get bothered. By all the modern strife Politicians, bankers, and bureaucrats That plague a rancher's life Politicians, bankers, and bureaucrats That plague a rancher's life At the top of page one it says Brisket at one time was considered a lower-valued part of the steer or heifer or cow But in recent years it's become pretty popular as a a choice of cut, and, of course, the price has gone up accordingly. Now, I went to work on one of these briskets uh, a few weeks ago, and with our secret combinations of soaking in it, soaking it in for about 24 hours, and then about six hours in the slow cooker, boy, it was good. But I don't usually spend a lot of time in the kitchen. And after I'd cleaned up, Billy said she couldn't find anything, so... This report from Rod Bain might help guys like me. Your kitchen may be the most organized living space you have in your home or residence. But as retired University of Illinois Extension Specialist Karen Chan notes, we can fall into areas of clutter in your kitchen, such as heaps of mismatched plastic storage containers and lids in a cabinet, or pots or dishes used only for special occasions. So she advises... Only those things that we use often deserve the prime real estate. And things that we use less frequently should go in the less convenient storage, maybe not even in the kitchen. To break things down further, let's go back to the issue with plastic containers and the challenges of storing those items in the kitchen. 
She says those people with the best system for plastic container storage are those who have just one or two sizes or shapes that they use most frequently, that there are several of, and that can be stacked up to take little space. As for the rest, Chan says, just recycle them. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. Livestock producers in the four western provinces and Quebec will be eligible for 2019 tax relief as a result of extreme weather conditions. Canadian livestock producers in designated areas can defer until 2020 some of the 2019 proceeds, if any, from the sale of breeding stock. Some producers had to downsize their herds because of drought-induced feed shortages earlier in the year. And to defer income for tax purposes, producers must have reduced their breeding herds by at least 15%. And if that reduction was less than 30% of the herd, 30% of the income from net sales can be deferred. Now, if the breeding herd was reduced by 30% or more, 90% of the income from net sales can be deferred. And a map of the areas in which the tax deferral might apply includes all of Saskatchewan, south of Saskatoon, most of the area in Alberta, east of Red Deer and southeast of Calgary, and a large swath of Manitoba from the Saskatchewan border east to Winnipeg, and a wide area of northern B.C. and Alberta surrounding Fort St. John. McDonald's Corporation is moving ahead with plans to reduce the use of antibiotics in its global beef supply. McDonald's says they'll measure current usage of antibiotics across its diverse global supply chain. Based on the findings, it plans to establish specific reduction targets by the end of next year. McDonald's said it'll measure the use of antibiotics in its 10 biggest markets, including the U.S., and set targets to curb their use by the end of 2020. The markets cover 85% of the company's global beef supply chain. And that Weather Network video that you might have seen in July or August that suggests that people should cut back by about 1.5 burgers a week, referring to a recent report from the World Resources Institute, the United Nations, and other partners on how the world can prepare to feed 10 billion population by 2050. The video doesn't reflect the true story, according to Jill Harvey, Public and Stakeholder Engagement Manager with the Canadian Cattlemen's Association. The group disputes the video's suggestion that cutting back on meat consumption could help save the planet, saying that beef production in Canada makes a positive contribution to the environment through maintaining grassland and sequestering carbon. The Canadian beef industry's greenhouse gas emissions are among the lowest in the world, she added, and uh, they're hoping the video will come down. September the 10th, there's a regular cattle sale and yearling sale at the BC Livestock Co-op Kamloops Yard. September the 12th, it's the regular sale in Williams Lake and the regular sale September 13th at the Vanderhoof Yards. And you can get all the details and watch the sales streaming live at bclivestock.bc.ca. Meanwhile, at the Innisfail Auction Market, regular cattle sales every Wednesday and lots of horse sales. And it uh, might be a good idea to list your yearlings or your calves coming off pasture. For the fall run, just give Danny, Mark, or Dwayne a call at 1-800-710-3166. Okay, that takes us to the final item. And I went in for my Class 1 driver's license medical exam last week, and I passed it just fine. So I can still drive anything on the road legally, I guess, and... Uh, I did actually put in a lot of years driving semis and B trains, hauling just about everything through the mountains in the winter, chaining up in snowstorms, uh, getting through on the black ice and the big cities, and I got through it all okay. And uh, a few folks have asked me at times, where did I think the scariest and most dangerous place in the country is to drive? And I say without hesitation, the Walmart parking lot. And that's the Rangeland News. Coming up on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear, horse training file. The guy says his horse has a nice disposition and uh, has really bonded to him. So what's the problem? Well, whenever he tries to ride him away from the barn, the horse throws a bucking fit. <laughs> we'll look at that when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West, the Urban Saddles and Western Wear. Horse training file looks at the age-old problem of the horse that's really nice 
until you try to ride them away from the barn. <laughs> First though, well, so many of you have been asking about the 2020 Spirit of the West Cruise. So here's the information. The dates, July the 1st to the 11th, 2020. The ship, Holland America's brand new Conning's Dam. The port where we'll board, Vancouver, British Columbia. And our destination, way up north. Oh. Way up north. A lot of you can drive to Vancouver, or you can take the famous Rocky Mountaineer rail trip, or just a shorter flight. We call this the Spirit of the West and Friends bringing it home. Billy and I will be stepping back from hosting cruises after 19 years of doing it, and we want this one to be really special for everybody. Get all the details at 1-800-530-0131. And see our cruise page at q-mclennan.com and our cruise Facebook page. Now it's time for the horse training file, brought to you by Irvine Tack and Western Wear, Canada's largest Western store. How do you spell back to school? I-R-V-I-N-E. Mister, you need help. Back to school starts with Irvin Tack and Western Wear. It's Western Wear with a welcome twist, even for the littlest cowboys and cowgirls. Latest styles, biggest brand names, jeans, boots, shirts, outerwear, and accessories, too. Tell your folks and then saddle up for Irvin's today. Pretty smart for a guy who can't spell so good. Irvin Tack and Western Wear. Off exit 305 on Highway 2 by Crossfield. Open seven days a week. Don't just wear it. Live it. Irvin Tack and Western Wear. And, of course, you can shop online from anywhere at urbansaddles.ca. Well, the guy says, I'm 50 years old and I've had a number of horses in my life and I now have a three-year-old paint gelding that is a pleasure to work around. He's got a nice disposition and he's really bonded with me. I ride him in the arena with no problem. But he has become so barn sour that when I ride him away from the barn, his whole attitude changes and he goes into a bucking frenzy. Not sissy bucking, he really throws a tantrum. Well, uh, I, I've got to question your assumption here that he's really bonded to you. He may be around the barn when you're on foot, but I suspect that when you're on his back, he doesn't know that you're that same person. Now, some backyard experts might say, you've just got to be firmer with him. Do whatever it takes to get him to let you ride him away from the barn. Well, if you start jerking and thumping on him when he starts showing the resistance, it'll probably just confirm his idea that being home is a way better than being ridden off somewhere. Now, this territorial instinct is a strong draw to horses, and most riders can't overcome this in a few days. It really depends on your experience, your riding ability, and your patience. In some cases, it works to saddle him and take him just a short ways from the barn and work him fairly hard from the ground. And if you understand body position and are comfortable with a 12 or even a 16 foot line or maybe a 22 foot line, then let him lope big circles in both directions until he's breathing pretty hard and breaking a sweat. And then I'd leave him saddled and tied near the barn for at least a half an hour. I'd repeat this for several days, and then if he looks ready, I'd saddle him and ride him inside of the barn and maybe around in the arena, but work him hard enough again to get him breathing really hard, and then uh, I'd start riding him, and if you can do that at a relaxed walk to a comfortable distance, and it depends entirely on what you read in him, and let him rest for a while, and then try your best to walk slowly back to the barn area, and then work him another 10 minutes or more, and then leave him tied and saddled up for a while before putting him up. Uh, it might help, and I probably wouldn't feed him as soon as I put him up. The idea is to have him thinking, gee, it's hard work around home, and relaxing and interesting out on the trail, and in a lot of cases with the right approach, this barn sour thing can sure be overcome. And for Urban Saddles and Western Wear, that's the horse training file. Our horses really enjoy their daily feeding of Hoffman's Horse Ration. Uh, and you can find out more at hoffmanshorseration.com. But they don't necessarily get it just as soon as we get back home from a long ride. When we did this interview with uh, Bob Wagner and Rusty Richards, Bob's great album, Heart of the Golden West, had just come out. And we talked about a song on it written by the composer of Ghost Riders in the Sky, Stan Jones. I enjoy the job you do on the old Stan Jones song, uh, 
the, the song of the trail, which is a song I've been looking for a couple of versions mm -hmm. of for a long, long time. I'm glad you put that one on there. Yeah, that's always been one of my favorites. And of course, Stan Jones has always been one of my favorite writers, uh, as I'm sure he's one of Rusty's. The guy has written some magnificent stuff. Little Easy Grow High, and it goes on and on. But uh, I did that song with the Rainsman when I was with him. I uh, sang the lead on that thing, and uh, that's the arrangement I learned, and I changed one little part of it, but uh, it, it is a great song. I had heard the thunder rolling out across the mountains high, where the wind is singing through the clouds are drifting through the sky. It's the song, it's the song of the trail, of the trail, the song of the clang and clash and thunder clash and all the mountain trail. I have seen the John and canyons and I've climbed the highest peak. I've felt the sun, wind and rain upon every cheek. It's the song, it's the song of the trail, of the trail, the song. of glory and I felt the mighty hand of the one who made all this sound here and made me what I am. I have heard the timber singing and the mighty river roar. The hymn of hymns to the mountain man, I'll hear it evermore. It's the song, it's the song of the trail, of the trail, the song of burst of glory and I felt the mighty hand of the one who made all the sound here and made me what I am. I have heard the timber singing and the mighty river roar. The hymn of hymns to the mountain man, I'll hear it evermore. It's the song, it's the song of the trail, of the trail, the song. Song of the Trail. Man, you listen to that with a great sound system and you can really appreciate the genius of Bob Wagner singing all those parts and playing all those instruments. And uh, sometime after we did this interview, Rusty Richards recorded a great solo album called Trails Old and New, and it featured 12 songs he's written, and he does some great guitar playing on. Here's track seven, called It's Never Too Late to Be a Cowboy. Out of the west rode the cowboy in his hat and high heel boots. He rode out of the mountain tops. He rode out of the chutes. Swinging a lariat, he came singing a song. You know it's never too late to be a cowboy, so saddle up and ride along. Saddle your ponies and ride the wind down the cowboy trail with me. Let all your worries just drift away and let your hearts go free. Sing out. It'll fill your hearts with joy Cause it's the cowboy way you know And it never is too late to be a horse through a wonderland with the wind in his mane and tail it spurs the jingle and sunsets and campfires surrounded by song you know it's never too late to be a cowboy so saddle up and ride along Oh, your girl, it matters not. 
stop Cause there's cowboy hisses and hers Sing now Whoopee-tie-yo It'll fill your hearts with joy Cause it's the cowboy way you know And it never is too late to be Well, just like Rusty Richards, the songwriter Stan Jones gave his songs a real identifiable sound. Yeah, absolutely. He's a, he's a dynamite writer. Um, I wonder, it comes to mind right now a story that uh, Olive, uh, the widow of Stan Jones, is a dear friend of mine in Anings, and he told us, she told us this story, and I think your listeners might get a kick out of it. Uh, Stan was a park ranger up in uh, Death Valley, and uh, he had, of course, he loved the, the, the American West and the whole uh, lore of the cowboy, all of that. And uh, he had a little guitar that Olive had bought him, a little tenor guitar, and he'd write songs. So he went into Hollywood and with his songs in hand. Make a long story short, he got word out there in Death Valley that one of his songs was going to be on the Lucky Strike hit parade. Well, where they lived, you couldn't get KFI where the hit parade then played. And so uh, Olive and Stan and their friends got in the pickup and they drove way out on top of this mountain. And I'm not sure, but I think the hit parade was like the top 20 song, something. It would come backwards from the top, from the, the, the 20th down through yeah, to number one. Lined up with the top so it had come down 20, 19, 18, their faces are getting a little longer. When it finally got down 10, 9, 8, and they're just miserable. They're sitting up there on the hill saying, well, it must not have gone on, you know. And the very first time that he ever heard his song on the radio, it was number one on, oh. the, on the hit parade. Mm -hmm. wow. And it was called Ghost Riders in the Sky. Who, who, would, who would have done that version that was recorded? That was that Vaughn Monroe? That was Vaughn Monroe. Well, as you might have guessed by now, this week's classic Song of the West segment will be that song, but... You might be surprised by the version you'll hear. And Rusty explains how and why the Sons of the Pioneers did not want to record it when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. This is our classic Song of the West segment, and the song Ghost Riders in the Sky has been recorded Oh, by hundreds and hundreds of artists over the years. There's more than 50 different versions of it in my collection alone, and the composer, Stan Jones, had written it with Bob Nolan and the Sons of the Pioneers in mind. But uh, Bob Wagner and Rusty Richards explained to me how that went. Bob Nolan and the Pioneers, uh, they had the shot at that song. It's true, uh, at least from what the, the Pioneers have told me, that, that uh, Stan wrote it for the Sons of the Pioneers. And they rejected it because I think it was Bob that felt like the melody was a steal from another song, which it, of course it was. It was a, if you listen to it, it's a Ghost Rider in the Sky and When Johnny Comes Marching Home are almost identical, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, when Johnny Comes Marching Home Again, hoorah, hoorah, is it, you know, yeah. old cowpoke and ride now, that's pretty close. <laughs> oh, man. And as Rusty said, the hit version was by a well-known orchestra leader who actually <clears throat> did star in a movie called Singing Guns a while after that. Not a bad movie either, I watched it. Anyway, this is the version I remember hearing as a kid. On the radio with Vaughn Monroe, it sounded like this. An old cowpoke been riding out one dark and windy day. Upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way. When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw a plowing through the ragged skies. And up a cloudy draw. The ghost heard in the sky. Now, I'm not sure what you'll think of this, but that version was being played absolutely on every radio station in North America on the charts, and not long after it hit the top. Spike Jones and his City Slickers did an amazing parody that does acknowledge the Vaughn Monroe version and what Rusty was saying about where the melody came from. <laughs> I hope you're ready for this. Ah, an 
old cowpoke went riding out one dark and windy day. <laughs> Upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way. <laughs> Well, now it went a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw A plowing through the ragged skies And a cloudy draw Uh, when do I come in, old timer? In this song, it don't matter, partner. Go ahead, sing. Their faces gone, their eyes were blurred, their shirts all wet with sweat. Don't be half sick, foolish boy. <laughs> They're riding hard to catch the herd, but they ain't caught them yet. Get along, little doggy. Cause you got to ride forever on that age up in the sky. On horses snorting fire. Is that possible? How would I know? As they ride on here, they cry. This is a cowboy legend? Oi! Yippee! Yippee! Let's get back to the sublime. We'll wrap this one up with a nice piece of cowboy poetry from Dennis Russell, and it's called The Old Yellow Horse. Some hold the memory of that one horse that was always willing and always able. And you know there's a horse out there that's still looking for the only part he ever knew. This is a story of such a horse. That old yellow horse, he still knows the way, and he hauled that cowboy day after day. The man hummed his tunes to the hooves kicking dust. That horse was his friend. He allowed him his trust. A picture of history as they covered the miles. That pair was all class. It sure showed in their style. The cowboy stood strong for which he deemed fair. That horse sure lived right in his old pard's good care. And through all the years, good times and bad, most of them happy, but a few of them sad, always working for others, watching cattle and land, man on horseback, both chewing on sand. But every Sunday they'd go the same way to the church on the hill where that cowboy would pray for that which he lost in his early years. The cowboy was sad to the horse, this was clear. That horse never knew why he kneeled to the ground at the same stone when they're spread all around. Tradition was set and they always would go every Sunday to mourn through the rain or the snow. That old yellow horse, 
He still stands in that pen just waiting on his lifelong friend. Something was wrong and he remembered that day when someone else came to scatter his hay. Months had gone by when the gate was a sway. On Sunday morning he walked the same way to the church on the hill where they always would go. Though his shoes had worked loose, the horse didn't slow. When he got to the stones it had grown quite cold. And there was the new right next to the old. As a creature of habit, that horse turned away. He walked back to his pen, just finished his hay. And that old yellow horse still stands there today. Well, thank you so much for riding along this week, and I sure hope you'll be able to join us right here next week at the same time. And as always, thanks to the official Spirit of the West support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan. And if you need tractor parts, uh, see Mark's page, bctractorparts.com. He can help you. And you can subscribe to Canadian Cowboy Magazine at cowboymagazine.com. Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon. 